We just got off the bus at 9.48 uh, and um, I started to film but uh, something was wrong with the sound with my microphone. So we go into the entrance to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center. So it's pretty much like a big theme park but everything is this in this park is real. It's all about space. So we are walking in uh, to the entrance of the park and this is going to be a very nice day. So I'm filming the surroundings, the parking lot and we were going a little closer to the big NASA ball yeah, at the entrance and everybody stay there in line to take pictures by that big NASA ball. If you didn't buy your ticket online, you can buy it right here on the left. So this is our group from our university. And this is a big NASA ball. And at the background, you see the um, rocket and the boosters for Atlantis shuttle. So we're taking a picture, we're standing in line for the picture. All the tourists come here and they stay in line to take the picture with this big NASA ball. I was so excited. Yeah. Heroes and legends. <laughs> This is called the Rock and Garden. Later on, with the um, private excursion, we're gonna get told that um, all the rockets are real except. Um, uh, the one big silver one it's a replication like the one the silver one but the all the rest of the rockets were actually real rockets that flew to space at some point and later on during excursion they're gonna explain us uh, different problems they had with those rockets this is a capsule on the end there, that's a, it's a rocket garden. On the end there. Go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do with the capsule to so we can sit here. This is the capsule. Uh -huh. Come, malinka, malusinka. International Space Center. sending astronauts to the International Space Station from American soil for the first time since the space shuttle program ended in 2011. We're continuing to launch new research experiments and supplies to the space station with our commercial resupply services. So shuttle used to go up until 2011 and since 2006 to 2011 I've seen a couple of the shuttle launches. In our ultimate mission, the Artemis program, where NASA will return to the moon. Okay, Artemis program, they're trying to return to the moon. Continue on tomorrow. 
Mars. And, all our and then they're trying to go to Mars. It's our insatiable desire to explore beyond the size of a 21 story building. The blue section alone is the size of an NBA basketball court. Each star is six feet across, and each red and white stripe is wide enough for this bus to drive down. And the entire BAB? It's so huge that the Roman Colosseum would fit on the roof with room to spare for a parking lot. By volume, the BAB can fit three and a half Empire State Buildings, and it would take 250 billion ping pong balls to fill it. It was built in the 1960s for the Apollo program. Every Saturn V rocket that sent humans to the moon was assembled right here. Every space shuttle mission also assembled within these same walls. This is the DAB building, the largest building in the world by volume. That's where his engineering shuttle with the shuttle city This thing has 2,750 horsepower. E16 place where you can watch the rocket launch, buy the tickets to watch the rocket launch from here. Like the closest you can be to the launch pad. Okay guys, we're going to Apollo Center. This is a big, big exhibit about the exploration of the moon. And again, I... Um, so loud here. This is the moon vehicle. I'm gonna go sit down in the moon. So that's the vehicle. I go to the moon in this little thingy. Woo! And we're going to Apollo. Visiting complex. Apollo. We're gonna see the rocket that went to the moon, guys. Stay tuned. What's up, YouTube? We're back with another video. Sorry. They playing Beatles because that's the music of the times when they went to space. I used to dream about flying through space. Every week on TV, I'd watch my hero jump into their rocket ships and took to the stars. And I wanted to be like them. They had courage, imagination, and no problem ever stood in their way for long. You know, in the end, when we actually did send men into space, it turned out that those were exactly the qualities it took. I'm John Hudson. This is Pad 39 of the Kennedy Space Center. I was a launch controller here when from this very spot, man took off to fly to the moon. It was a journey that began 12 years before that rocket ever left the ground. And it started on the other side of the world. Back then, we were one of two superpowers that always seemed to be on the edge of the terminal. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first ever man-made satellite into Earth orbit. They called it Sputnik, which means traveling companion. And in a world where peace hung in a delicate balance, it seemed to be a dangerous advantage. Every ham radio operator in America could hear were the Soviets looking down on us, watching us. If they could make a satellite pass over our cities, could they do the same with the ball? Our own space program kicked into high gear, and less than two months later, we were ready to launch our own satellite. It was being called the Space Race, and we were running a distant second. In 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first man into space, circling the world in just 89 minutes. We had our own astronauts, and they were eager and ready to take the big run. But our manned space program 
couldn't seem to get off the ground. We stuck with it, and on May 5th, 1961, things finally started going right. Astronaut Alan Shepard took his ship Freedom 7 six and a half miles into space. Now America had its first space here. Just a few days later, our space program received a new channel. Okay, and this is the room, the control room. This is the control room. Very consoles we sat at when men first took off the flight of the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big disease, and we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown to. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rocket. This was the Phoenix, risen from the ashes of Apollo 1. The first Apollo crew did not let others had made their final preparations before taking that long ride up to the waiting spacecraft. The minimum safe distance from a Saturn V to liftoff was three miles. The reason was simple. When fully fueled, the rocket contained the explosive power of an atomic bomb. As the clock counted down, the astronauts and all of us in launch control went through the pre-flight checks, our hands on the controls of the most power. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders would pay with their lives. As they sat, waiting for launch on a chill December morning, these three astronauts went back to what they had always been, test pilots. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments of history. Our status already indicates that all aspects are ready. Instrument unit is ready, spacecraft ready, final check of the emergency detection system, that ready light also now. First stage preparations are completed. Red. 
get all the rats. We fill in the rattle. What the heck? Exactly the room, the control room. Apollo 8 successfully orbited the moon. The astronauts returned safely to the Earth. I knew the first men to see the surface of the moon from just a few miles away. But it was the hundreds of thousands of men and women who worked at that team. The millions of people who supported the mission that really made it possible. This is epic. This is epic. That's the real rocket. Apollo. OMG, guys. Look at that. That's the rocket. Woohoo! Huge. What in the world? So, I'm in the Polar Center, and this is the rocket that went to space, Apollo 8. That's the real one. That's the capsule. That's the rocket. Look how huge it is. OMG, it's huge. I have to go back because we're doing we're doing a private tour we're doing a private tour with um, our group of people so I'm going to go back on the bus to make sure I'm on time for the private tour, private tour. wow that's huge That was Like a huge gate. People go in and out. I think we'll come back on the private tour here. So I'm gonna go back. The costume, astronaut costumes in the shop.